Archaic Talk Show. I'm your host, Archaic Asthma. I'm joined with James Otis, who's a lawyer, and John Paul Jones, who's a naval commander. He also has three first names, so, you know, he's lucky. Um, those of you that are new to the show, archaic means old or old-fashioned, and the Revolutionary War. Well, it's old, and old-fashioned, too. So, before I take their entire stories away, how about we have them introduce themselves? James, how about you? Hello, everybody. I am James Otis. I was born on February 5th, um, 1725, and I died on May 23rd, uh, 1783, by being struck by lightning. I am Captain John Paul Jones. I served 28 years with the Continental Navy, the Merchant Navy, and the Imperial Russian Navy. I died of arrhythmia, which is an irregular heartbeat, which my heart was either beating too fast or too slow. Mm. Well, I feel like I know you two more than I ever have, which, I mean, that's kind of true. I just met you guys, brought you back with the time machine. Yeah. Uh, I know you two but much better now. Now then, um, I, I'm sorry, but we're going to have to cut to a more commercial break. Um, when we get back from the commercial break, we're going to a section in the archaic talk show called The Questioning. I'm back from the commercial. I hope you enjoyed whatever it was. I, I really don't know what the producers or crew put in for the commercials. So, how about we get on to the questions? So, what did you contribute to the American Revolution, huh? Well, I contributed many things to the American Revolution, okay? Yeah. yeah. Uh, one of my most famous things I contributed was my, quote, taxation without representation is tyranny. Okay. Well, first off, I joined the Continental Navy. Mm -hmm. You can't really go around just blowing up British ships with cannons for no reason, if you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I know what you mean. <laughs> we, we do that nowadays, too. Well, first off, I had to join the Navy. Then my fleet and I were sent on assignment to destroy the British ship called Serapis in 1779. Oh, okay. It took a while, you know, a little fleet against a giant Navy cruiser. Yeah, and they're experienced, yeah, too. And they're well, experienced guys aren't exactly experienced. Well, I've been experienced. I've been in some battles, but not, nothing like that. Yeah, in nothing the beginning. Like uh, but we were able to pull out, and we won the battle. We sunk the surface. Yeah. Well, thank you, too, for the answers. Um, however, the crew is uh, suggesting another commercial break. So, yeah, hope you enjoy the commercial. The Archaic Talk Show... Now then, let's get on to the second question. What are you guys least known for? James? Well, that question is very interesting. Let me think. Ah, uh, well, the majority of people might not know that I was actually elected into the General Court of Massachusetts in 1761 and re-elected until my death in 1783. So, you were popular. Yes. Yeah. John? Well, Arkea, that's quite interesting to ask because no one asked me any of this. I mean, yeah, this is kind of the first for you. No one asked me any of this before today. <laughs> so, I was having my portrait, meanwhile, I was having my portrait done by Jean Anthony Hudson. Mm -hmm. And while I was having my portrait done, I was also, meanwhile, the ambassador of, American ambassador to France. Yeah. Well, that's interesting. Definitely didn't know about any of this about you guys. Well, now I definitely know you until you die in, like, 24 hours. I know. Yeah. Anyways. Um, did you say you led raids to the, on Ireland? Yes, I did lay, lay raids on Ireland. It took... I most of them were laid on England because our travel. Hello? Yeah. Um... But the otherwise, I did one of few assaults on Ireland because we got intel. We don't know if this is true or not, but we thought that the intel said was basically what it was saying was that Ireland was trying to ally with England. Uh huh. So we and we saw heard that from the intel that there might be an Irish ship yeah. near their port. Hmm. I didn't know Ireland had, like, fighting ships back then. They did have some. I thought they were just more merchant ships, but I guess they had fighting they ships, They are too. merchant ships. They were giving, Oh, they were just they merchant were, ships? Just they were, some cannons. of them were merchant ships, some of them were navy. Uh, but the okay. one we were, 
working in Talon was a merchant ship because we were hearing that they were getting weapons from it. Oh, okay. And we don't want them to have weapons. Mm -hmm. Least weapons as possible in order to win the war. Yeah. Oh, thank you guys for the answers. Now let's move on to the third question. Where were you when the first shots were fired in the American Revolution? Huh? Where were you? Where were you? Um, <coughs> um, I think John Paul Jones should go first because honestly, I have to think about this. Oh, you have to think about it? Okay. John, how about you? Yeah, this is quite fuzzy. I don't know why it's fuzzy. I just did this a few years ago. Um, if I remember right, I 1775, yeah. I was leading a raid on the British ship when the first shots were fired at that time. Uh, huh. James, you remember yet? I really don't know what there. I mean... I don't know where I was. I mean, you, you were a thank lawyer. You, for the question, though. you were a lawyer. You were I was dealing everywhere. with lots of stuff. You, you don't really remember, nor do you want to remember, because no. I mean, it, it was a bad time. Well, thanks for the answers, you two. Um, we're going to be right back after this brief commercial break. Hope you enjoy it. Back to the archaic talk show. I hope you enjoyed that commercial. I'm not really sure what it was. Drew had some fun with whatever commercials they have. Let's get on to the fourth question. Where were you? after the American Revolution ended. Well, okay. I was having another portrait being painted by Gene N.T. Hudson because he is the most known for painting ambassadors to France, anyone, basically. Yeah. So I was having a second one done, and I really was hoping I wouldn't have to get another one, but the secretary said, you're having another one done? Okay. So I really have no place to put it. So, like, you had one painting in your hallway, but then you got a second one, and you're like, do I put it, like, opposite, or do I put one at this end of the hall and one at this end of the hall? You, you just don't or know. Or do I put one on the other side just because it's the second term? Yeah. I have no clue. You don't know. Do you, like, have one wall full of paintings? And... Yeah. How about you, James? Well, actually, not that I think about it, I think I was dead. Oh, you were dead? Yes. I hope you get better. That, that doesn't sound too good. Well... Number five, what battles did you participate in, if any? I feel like this is going to be a, a John-dominated area. You know, James, I'm sorry, but I think John did more. Um, well, if I remember this right, I was engaged by the British ship Countess of Saraboa. Uh -huh. It took a while... Basically, it was basically in the same spot that Serapis was. Oh, okay. It wasn't in, it wasn't an in Ireland ship. It was a British. Main but British. It was a main. It was a British. British Galleon. A, it basically was. It was loaded. It oh. was loaded with. Okay, everything. so like a big galleon. It was loaded. I mean, yes, uh, okay. it probably was a galleon. I bet because it was huge and had cannons. More cannons than we had. I can tell you that. Cannons loaded on all sides. It took a while. Had a, we got hit by a few cannonballs. Mm -hmm. Took a few boards, but we were able to patch it in. Yeah, you know, j just a couple. Yeah, just a few. Right. So then, after it took a while, but we were able to destroy that one too. Mm -hmm. We had the whole fleet there. We were all in the line, so yeah. we decided to use one of the British tactics that they use on land. Yeah, go in a line. Mm -hmm. Spread out. And then spray. And then just spray the cannonballs. Spray that uh -huh. James, what about you? Did you do any fighting? No, actually, I didn't. No? You are fighting on the law? The yes, yeah. fighting by law. Mm-hmm. Well, all right, John. Uh, number six, in terms of questions. What did you do after the war? Because I feel like you died before the war ended. Is that true? A little bit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Joe, don't answer how you died yet. That's not today's question. What did you do after the war? Well, Arkea, I was writing a letter to Benjamin Franklin, actually. Oh. Well, I, was, okay. I was told by the Order of Cincinnati to write a letter to Ben Franklin mm -hmm. because they wanted him back to the colonies. Because yeah. for some reason, I have no clue why that was classified information at that you time. You just kind of were told, write a letter. I was told, write a letter again back here. Yeah. And I also added a few things because big Ben Franklin fan, can't lie. 
I had to tell him this, but I support him with everything he says, does, almost everything. Mm -hmm. Almost like, everything. Almost everything. Some things he can be a bit out of line, but most of Like picking his nose, you don't support that. <laughs> no, I really don't. No gold digging here. Well, anything else? Or you good? Not that I can remember. Okay, number seven. Uh, how did you guys die? You know? Well, I think I don't, don't be afraid to go all out with the details. I want to hear it. They're fine, the crew. I mean, they're fine with it. Well, okay. Yeah. I think this is going to put a chuckle on your face. I mean, I think that's my good chuckle for show. Mm -hmm. Well, she got cooked by lightning. Lightning? Yes, lightning. Boom! Yes. Oh, so like fried. Fried. Crispy James. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay, John. Um, I died of an arrhythmia, which is an irregular heartbeat that caused my heart to either be too fast or too slow. But if it was too fast, it would put me in shock, actually. And, yeah. you know, shock can too good. No, shock's not that good. And if it was too slow, I'd be sluggish. Mm -hmm. I might be vomiting because it's going too slow. My father used to have it. Oh, really? This is a true story. My father used to have it. Mm -hmm. But somehow, he took... Actually, it wasn't with me. It was more anxiety than everything. More anxiety than... Yeah, because... Well, they both begin with A's, so... Yeah. Yeah. It's anxiety, yes. So... Well, James. Arrhythmia. New word. New word for some of the crew, too. Yeah. They're shaking their heads. Um... James, I don't think you should really ever go outside again. Unless you want to be called the extra crispy James, Otis. Don't think you should go back outside. Well, we'll move on to the new segment of the Archaic Talk Show after this brief commercial break. The Archaic Talk Show. This segment is called What If. John, what if you had died at sea? Who would have taken your role as an evil commander? Well, Archaea, that would have to be one of my close friends yeah. from the Imperial Russian Navy, Catherine II. I mean, he was a rank above me, but he always gives me assignments that work. He somehow must have knew that I had a good enough leader crew. That yeah, you just had like a good enough crew. You could, you could manage all the tasks. And manage. You were strong. Yeah, strong navy. Yeah. Strong command. The crew trusted me for one thing. That's probably one reason why. That would have to be. That's okay. One I can think of. James, what if you had been turned into Crispy James from the Lightning? What would you have done? Well, this is going to have to be so. Well, I probably would have stayed as a lawyer. Uh huh. And worked as a, you know, as a lawyer to keep up my good work and until retirement, probably. Uh huh. Um. What about the revolution? Why, why didn't you fight in the revolution? Well, actually, I didn't fight in the revolution because I knew basics of four guns, but I did not feel comfortable shooting, like, people and. Actually, I didn't, I knew a lot about guns, but I didn't know enough that I could fight it. So, so you know how to shoot a flintlock pistol? You yeah. know how it works? Yeah. yeah. In, enlighten me, lawyer. Well, actually, it's quite very very simple, actually. Okay. Um, all it really is is just a flint and steel inside of it. Yeah. So it's pretty much the same as a musket where you just load in the black powder and then you load in the um, ball that you're going to fire with. A little and then, ball, which... Got stuck in some people's legs. And then, Gotta cut them off. When you pull the trigger, you actually can. It lights the flint and steel to put the spark. So then it lights the black powder, which makes it so then the black the black powder expands so fast that it actually shoots the ball out. Yeah, a, a little explosion it, and then yeah. ball whoo, out of the barrel chamber. Yes. Whatever you want to call. It. So you're telling me you also know how to shoot a musket? Yes. Okay. It's actually very quite simple. It's actually just using a flash pan instead of a flint and steel. Uh huh. So, if you're telling me it's simple, why didn't you fight in the revolution? All it takes more than like a fear factor. Oh, so you were scared? Yeah. So you valued your own life more than your country, or was it like a super dominating fear factor? I think it was more of a super dominating fear factor. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't know about super, but maybe like a bigger fear yeah. factor. So you know, you like you liked living. Yeah. Until, I mean, who doesn't? Until you got turned into Crispy James. Crispy James. Yeah. 
Um, John, I have to know, what would have happened if you never had a the heart problem? You know, like, would you have, what would you have done? Well, Mr. Kazma, I would have to say that I would probably be still serving for one of my past navies, like the Merchant Navy, the Imperial Russian Navy. Uh -huh. I mean, after the war was over, I couldn't serve with the Continental Navy anymore. I didn't want to be... Sorry for the sudden change of scenery. Some of the film crew's equipment broke, lights, stuff. It was bad, like, really bad. Like, the film equipment got damaged, like, a lot. Anyways, thank you, too, for answering my questions tonight. Uh, I appreciate it a lot. Um, did you guys want to say anything before I end the show? Um, yes, um, I was really happy to come on here once you explained it a bit thorough, more thorough, once you yeah. came. And apologies for pulling out my Flintlock pistol. Yeah, you know, a, a random dude wearing some weird-looking clothes to you, but normal to me, just comes out and says, Here, come with me, I want you to answer some questions. Yeah, that, that's kind of like a normal response. That's I instinct think. to me. Yeah. Every single time someone asks me something strange, I've always pulled that out. Yeah. And they always either turn out to be very short. They always do. Oh, always. Oh. What about you, James? Anything? Just be James? Anything? Stay away from lightning. Oh. Okay. Well, thank you for tuning in to the Archaea Talk Show. Um, on YouTube, search Archaea Casma, and you'll see more of the Archaea Talk Show. Hope to see you next time. Hope you enjoyed. And, yeah. Today is the American Revolution with John Paul Jones the naval Navy commander, or a Navy commander, not the, and James Otis, who's a lawyer. And it's crispy. Yes, and it's crispy.